Hello and welcome. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm a firm believer in the saying that when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Now, this, of course, is a proverbial phrase that is used to encourage a can-do attitude in the face of adversity or difficulty in life. And that's perfect for what we're living through at the moment, through this challenging COVID-19 era and, of course, life in lockdown. So as we stay home to stay safe, what better opportunity to keep the family active and teach the kids the valuable life uh, lesson and the skills to connect with nature through gardening. And to help talk to us about this today, we are joined by a familiar face, Charlie Albone, a TV celebrity gardener and landscape designer, better known for co-hosting Selling Houses Australia for the last 13 seasons and recently joined Channel 7's Better Homes and Gardens. And Charlie is also Rich Grow's ambassador. And when Charlie is not busy getting his hands in the dirt, he's a busy family man. He's a husband to Juliet Love, interior stylist and dad to two boys, Hartford and Leo. Thanks for joining us today, Charlie. How are you doing? I'm good. My pleasure to join you. Excellent. I'm really looking forward to this chat. Um, And I guess more so than anything, you know, with what we're living through at the moment and in times of stress and anxiety, spending time outdoors in the garden will almost always help lift and improve and lift our mood and our spirits and our frame of mind. And I guess that's something that a lot of parents and kids are really needing at the moment. So I'd just love to know initially, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, Well, (laughs) my garden completely saved me during this COVID um, period. You know, um, I can imagine people with mental health problems would really be struggling at the moment, especially if they didn't have a garden to go out and just realize that the world isn't everything that it is on the news and it's not, you know, coming to an end. There is, there is still some amazing things in this world. And uh, my garden really gave me that, um, you know, just being outside and touching the earth is, is a fantastic thing to do. It's, it's funny, I was talking to a yoga teacher, uh, not that I do yoga or have ever done yoga in my life, but she was trying to persuade me to go and do yoga. She's like, you know, it really chills you out. It makes you less anxious. And I'm like, well, I don't really have any of those problems. You know, I'm quite <laughs> a relaxed person. And I put it down to the amount of gardening I do, the amount, you know, the amount of sun on my back, the amount of dirt under my fingernails and, and that kind of connection to the, to the world. And, and she was saying that... Um, she was talking about energies coming through the ground and chilling me out and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, there's a bit of woo woo in that, but I also think there must be some truth as well. Oh, I actually agree completely. And, and all in all, like in talking about kids, just, just for a moment too, it's a really great way to get them off screens um, and a new yeah. way just to provide fun in their, in their day as well. And irrespective, I guess, if families are struggling financially at the moment, it's free. Mm. It doesn't, it doesn't cost anything yeah. to get out. <laughs> I think a kid's imagination is the best bit of uh, play equipment they'll ever have. And if you can give them a space to use it in a garden or something like that, all all the better. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, And it's, in your words, it's been said before, and this is quoting you, um, that you like to think of the garden as an outdoor classroom. It's tactile, it's ever-changing, and there are lessons to be learned in the smallest details, which that's beautifully written and beautifully said. So I'd love to know a little bit more about this philosophy in your, your point of view. Could you expand on that a little bit um, for us? Yeah, so I think the very first thing I remember when I knew, well, the, so when I, sorry, I'll start again. When I knew I wanted to get into gardening was the, I knew the moment pretty much when I saw this bulb called a snakeskin fritillaria coming out of the ground and, and the petals are covered in like, it looks like snakeskin. And I thought this was the most amazing thing. I was 18 years old and it just took me back to being, you know, a child when you discover something for the first time. And that sort of finding those minute details in, in life is, is a, a real joy. And I think if you can show kids bulbs coming up and things like that it just excites their uh, imagination so that's kind of my theory on, on and that. yeah it's, it's an incredible moment in your life when your life passion just drops and you just know what you're here to do and what you're passionate about was that that moment for you then yeah it was i knew that that was something i, I wanted to do so i i kind of fell into landscaping in a strange way i um I'd, I'd always enjoyed being outside, but um, I actually I witnessed a car accident where a drunk driver hit a, a oh, gate of a property. And I went in and said, um, look, the, I know the car, this was the car, and he offered me a job. And that sort of, you know, I just love that kind of the Serendipity. way that it came about. And then seeing these things, 
yeah, and then seeing the things in this guy's garden, like the bulbs coming up and the changing of the seasons and stuff like that, really, um, yeah, just I knew that's something I wanted to do. Yeah, and do your two boys, I guess, share the same passion at all? They love being outside, they do. Um, you know, gardening with children and gardening itself is a two different things. <laughs> so you can't expect to get stuff done when you've got kids in the garden. With you. If you've got a list of gardening jobs to do, the kids are not going to help you, but they're going to be up, you know, if you're cutting lawns and things like that, they can be playing and stuff like that. But getting, uh, you know, stuff pruned properly or, um, you know, a garden bed successfully weeded or something like that, it's just not going to happen with kids, but it's great to have them around and enjoying it and, and you know, get it, getting them started, dipping their toes in the water as such. Yeah. Well, that being said, what lessons do you think that gardening can actually teach children then? Uh, patience. Gardening is all about patience. I mean, I have so many clients in my landscaping business that need to learn patience and they get it, you know, and, and, and it just comes from uh, plants are slow growers. They, they are, I mean, and, and they evolve in, in, a, in a slow way. I mean, there's fast growers, there's slow growers, but uh, a really lovely mature garden is one that is, is, is old and that just takes time. There's nothing you can do to cheat it. There's no amount of, uh, I mean, you can speed it up with feeding it and watering it and gardening it well, but, you know, it's still, it takes time. Yeah, I think patience, you know, as a saying, it is a virtue, but it's something that, you know, unless you sort of have, and I know for myself, I've really struggled with patience my whole life and it's taken a lot of life uh, struggles to be able to understand and learn patience. If you can teach it to children from a young age, I think it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, yeah. And also there's, so there's, you know, you can go out and you can buy a big plant, sure, but it's, it's the, the caring and nurturing for plants, uh, combining it with that patience and getting the end result of something that is much more satisfying than going and buying something bigger as well as a good thing to teach kids, I think. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Well, I've done a little bit of research um, on other stuff that it can teach kids and I just wanted to run through them to get your, your thoughts on them. Yeah. The first one is that it can teach kids about uh, how life starts from the ground up and of course where their fruit and vegetables come from in particular. Um, and there was some re research that had shown that when kids have a part in growing their own vegetables, that they're actually more likely to eat them. And, and another study, um, this particular one was from the University of Florida in 2016, but they found the benefits that, um, that continued into adulthood um, as, as more so as the, the college students ate more fruit and vegetables as adults um, when they actually grew them as kids, which is interesting. So what are your thoughts That's on that? I couldn't agree more. I think, um, you know, we've got a veggie patch that our kids come and that come and help out in. They've also got their own sort of veggie patches, which grows literally nothing. It's just a space for them to, to potter around and be like mum and dad. But uh, it's a great way of explaining how, how things happen. You know, we've got cauliflower and broccoli at the moment and to show like to, to show the kids like pull the leaves apart and discover when it starts to grow. And then as they go out on the daily and watch it kind of getting bigger and bigger, I think that's fantastic. And they are much more likely to, to eat it. And it gives you a point of reference to get them to eat other things that you might not be growing as well. So you yeah. kind of explain how, how stuff grows and, and it, we've got chickens as well. So every time we eat chicken, they ask, is this one of our chickens? I'm <laughs> like, no, no, there's still six out there. Go count them. Yeah. So, but they kind of get that whole idea of, of that sort of, uh, where does your food come from and what are you actually eating? Yeah. And next um, on my little list, I've got, uh, it can also teach kids about the environment and just how to appreciate it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, definitely. So we, we have a compost heap as well, which is, um, you know, and separating your waste out. And your, I mean, it's amazing when you start a compost, how much green waste you actually make in your, in your kitchen. It, it's staggering really. Uh, and it's really good to show the kids that make sure they separate their recyclables properly. And, you know, it just, the more you can teach them about that stuff, it just ingrains it into them and then they don't have to think about it when they're older. They just, they just do it. And just the early lessons about sustainability as well, I guess, which is really, yeah, really totally. important on that. And showing them the stuff that actually does go in the bin and does go in landfill and that, that can't be recycled or reused, then it's kind of good to show them that too, because they, they need to know the whole picture. Oh, couldn't agree with you anymore. Next on our list, we've got how to nurture the growth of something that is just alive. So to, and, and that's what you were sort of talking about before, I guess, too, is just the patience of having something maybe small that's going to take time to, to, to grow. I don't know. What are your thoughts? 
<laughs> uh, nurturing plants is, is so satisfying when it goes right, but it can be so disheartening when it goes wrong as well. Uh, but it's, it's really good to, to show kids how things grow. If you overwater them, if you don't water them enough, what happens to them? Why did that happen? Uh, and, and I mean, the kids are smart. They'll put two and two together if, if you're not doing something right and it's not looking its best, you know, so that's a lesson for them to learn themselves. But you just you, you give them the tools to to start off, you know, teach them they need water, they need light. Why is it why is it burning on the edges? Does it have too much water? Is it too much sun? And, and that kind of thing is really that's important. Fun. Then they take ownership of it. Yeah. Yeah. And what about the health benefits? I mean, kids are, lot, um, are likely to get covered in so, uh, soil and dirt. And, but I guess as a question, is this type of bacteria good for, for children? Uh, look, I'm not a scientist, so I, I, I don't want you to hold me to that. But um, I know that I, I'm very rarely sick. I have a very good immunity. And I think that's from having my hands in the dirt the whole time. And I, I mean, this COVID thing is sending me crazy because I have to wash my hands so much. Which I'm <laughs> not used to. Uh, and my, my, my kids. Uh, so in the lockdown, I started a little ISO project uh, where we extended our veggie patch into we have a five acre property up the coast. And um, we sort of pushed out to do a big kitchen garden and um, it rained a lot. And so we had this huge mud pile and the kids just spent the whole day covered in head to toe in mud and I just thought it's, <laughs> you know, it's going to be good for them good for their immunity in, in some way or another for sure and what I, I was reading that soil helps expose kids to germs that help them build a strong immune system um and also that researchers had noted that kids who come into contact with microbes um say let's say if they're growing up on a farm or something like that actually have lower rates of allergies too so all good stuff yeah. Just not good yeah, for the laundry. Uh, uh, yeah, not, not good for the laundry. Definitely not. Stop wearing white outside, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but it's similar effect to having pets, isn't it? It's, it's um, the, same, the same thing. Yeah. Now, we published your article titled Top Tips for Gardening with Kids. And it's a beautifully written article that um, I found emotive yet very informative. So um, for someone who hasn't yet read the article, could you please tell us uh, what it's about and uh, just what inspired you to write it? Well, I guess my kids inspired me to, to write it um, and, and the whole lockdown um, scenario. We, we had our kids out of school long before um, they were, you know, schools were, were closed in New South Wales and having them around and spending more time with them, I guess, uh, I, w I wanted to share what I enjoy with my kids and what I enjoy in, in the garden and, and hopefully give that to parents that don't really know sort of where to start uh, and, and see, uh, those that don't see a point in it, maybe to inspire them to get outside. You know, that's why I, I enjoy doing uh, TV. I still find it incredibly awkward, but um, it inspires people to get into gardening and that's kind of what I, I love to do. Um, it's what, not one of those things you can kind of explain to someone, um, explain, try and explain to a 19 year old kid that they're going to enjoy gardening, <laughs> you know, when they'd much rather be with their mates, uh, until you do it and experience it, you don't really, uh, appreciate it as much. So I just guess I want to inspire people to get out there and do it. And, and what better to do it with than your kids? Yes. And your article beautifully breaks down things that you can do and plant in the garden with the kids. And it's broken down in each season. Um, and of course, we'll have a link in the show notes for everybody to have a read. Um, but you know, as we're in winter at the moment, could you maybe just maybe talk us through some of the things um, with us now, starting with activities we can do with the kids, particularly maybe that are, let's say a little bit more high intensity to maybe get them <laughs> sort of just to tie them out a little bit, maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I mean, uh, just off the top of my head, because I see, I write these things, I send them off and I, I forget that I've sent them Of course, them off. of course. Uh, I, I, so things that I've been doing with my kids recently, I guess, is, is a good treasure hunt. So, you know, go to the weediest patch you can find uh, and see how many weeds you can pull out and bring back is a great way to get them running oh, that's, around. That's a, that's a great um, one. <laughs> chasing uh, compost again is a fantastic one because you go back and you've got to turn your compost heap and all that sort of stuff so that that wears them out as well um the ve into the uh, veggie patch at the moment like i said is, is broccolis and cauliflowers and stuff stuff stuff's growing a bit slow at the moment because it's winter and kids as we said don't really have the patience so try some fast growing things radishes and spinach will always germinate throughout the year you can do stuff in the house and then take it out as well um so yeah there's there's plenty that can be done with kids yeah. Oh, your article mentioned things like raking up leaves, um, digging and, and running even back and forth to fetch things like watering cans and gloves can sometimes tire the kids out, just get them sort of running some errands. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I guess the time in the gardens can sort of be 
application or two. And you do mention even just teaching them how different tools work and lawn mowers and those types of things. Um, yeah, and- when it's really cold, you can head up, well, we head up to the shed and I show the kids the tools and that sort of stuff. But one thing I used to do with my mum when we lived in Hong Kong was uh, every time we plant something, we'd use the plant pots and turn them upside down and put, put some string in them and a cut off hose and make stilts out of them and have stilt races. Oh, that is uh, if that makes sense. So, I mean, that, that's a fun thing that, that people can be doing now. So you get the whole process of planting something in the ground, watering it, looking after it, but then what do you do with the pots rather than throw them out? You can turn them into stilts, yeah. Oh, that, that's beautiful imagery of you as a kid actually doing that as well. So this, I mean, it's just, it's just using the time for being creative. And that's another thing that you mentioned in the articles. You can use the time to, to plan a project. So let's say if they had the chance, what would they do with the outdoor space, you know, um, and the chance for them to think creatively, um, what would they actually do? So, yeah, spending time, I guess... I mean, have you done anything like that with the kids before as well? Any creative projects out in the garden? So we, yes, we are. Uh, we sort of did a design your own cubby house type thing, uh, and then tried to combine them because obviously I've got two kids and they both wanted exactly what they'd had. So we had to sort of work out how we combine the two. And in the end, we just uh, so we were inside whilst it was raining, drawing up. Uh, these things and I was actually doing a bit of work doing some drawing and they were asking what I was doing and I was trying to help them and and how do you design a good cubby house but then we went outside to build it and uh, we didn't actually get around to building it because you know it's they wanted a tree house 20 foot tall with a slide and a jet airplane (laughs) but that's their imagination (laughs) exactly that's their imagination we ended up building an obstacle course with, with using that as inspiration you know with seesaws and and I mean I've got bricks laying around everywhere and stuff so so that kind of a thing uh which they love doing and it was a great way to get them outside keep their imaginations going yeah so i guess you know spending time in the garden is really just that perfect circuit breaker for challenging days with the kids and it's healthy fun and fulfilling way to 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 keep them active and to exercise um and especially i guess those long winter days when at the moment where we can't sort of go to the park or the jungle gym or the library or whatever. Um, but you've mentioned um, a couple of times two different things that we could be planting and growing for this time of year. So what, what um, can you suggest? What is good to grow in um, plant and grow, sorry, in winter? <laughs> so yeah, winter, um, you really sort of need to be planting in, in autumn to get your broccolis and, and your cauliflowers your kale you can plant all year round, which some people love, some people hate. Um, you're kind of in the zone now where you could start planting for spring. So, but you'd need to have a really warm area. So when there's no more frost, um, if you've got a greenhouse or you can start planting some seeds inside, which is a nice thing to do with, with kids, even if you're using uh, old eggshells as, as uh, seed to raise some seeds in, then you can plant those directly in the garden. Um, you know, and any of the lettuces, they, they'll germinate all year round as well. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that being said, you've long advocated also, and you've mentioned earlier on in the chat about the mental health benefits that come along with gardening. Can you just for a moment, maybe tell us a little bit more about this and I guess where your, your passion sort of come, came from or, or comes from? Yeah. Look, I think, um, I think I realized that gardening was so good for mental health when I was weeding and it, it kind of dawned on me that, Weeding is one of those jobs that will never, ever be finished ever in your whole entire life. You will never finish weeding your garden because as soon as you finish, there's always going to be another weed that pops up and you can do it all over again. And you kind of realize that, okay, well, this isn't a job to be finished. This is just something that needs doing. And and you use that time to to zone out and enjoy the quiet time. and, And don't get upset if one of the kids runs out and you need to go and do something with them because the job was never going to be finished in the first place, if that makes sense. So it's something you can always go back to and just chill out and zone out and, and pull weeds. And I think having that mindset with gardening, understanding that it's a growing living thing that you're dealing with um, really takes the stress out of life. You know, you're not trying to create perfection. People mm-hmm. see these perfect gardens and they try and create perfection, but that's just a snapshot in time when someone's just finished cutting all the hedges or something like that. So yeah, don't be so hard on yourself, people. Just enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy the small things in life. 
I must say my grandmother um, is, has always, her garden has been her thing. And even no matter what your age, it's, it's, she lives by herself, but it gives her that ability. She knows at what time of year she needs to do and prune and to be planting. And she has that sense of purpose um, that, that keeps her going and not just from a mental perspective, but physically as well. So, um, you know, I think on as irrespective of, of what your age is, there's just so many benefits. Um, she oh, also... Yeah. Yes, sorry, go. <laughs> uh, my, I was going to say, my mum's a, a keen gardener as well. And for those that um, are a bit, you know, a bit worried about taking on a garden or, or keeping a garden up, a garden diary is a fantastic way to, to make sure that you're always, you know, you're always doing the right thing. You make, make a note and then if there's a mistake or something, flowers late or, or come, you know, you get frost on some fruit that shouldn't have, then you can look back to when you planted it and, and when you fed it and things like that. And it's just a great record to keep. Absolutely. Now I just have one question because my grandmother's always talked to her plants. Do you believe in that? And what's your spin on talking to plants? <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder because uh, people do, people do talk to yeah. their plants and they, they, they swear by it. <laughs> yeah. My wife talks to her plants. My wife talks to everything. She talks to our houses, our plants, everything. <laughs> I'd like that. Um, you know, if it makes you happy, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I, I guess some kind of energy and if you can speak to it, great. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I guess as human beings overall, we are sort of, you know, we do generally feel happy and much more op optimistic around plants and nature as they are living as well. So, um, and do you think it's sometimes too, it's just the simplicity about caring for plants, given that they are living and nurturing them, it, it, that is part of, of what the, the benefits are from a mental health perspective? Yeah, absolutely. It gives you something... Um, I mean, it sounds crazy to say looking after a plant gives you something to wake up to do, you know, it gives you some kind of purpose, but it kind of, it, it does. It's enjoyable to watch stuff grow and look after it. So yeah, um, definitely. I don't know why it does that, but it, it does that. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely, you know, it's, it's a sense of purpose while we are sort of in lockdown and all great lessons for kids as well. Now, getting back to what we we're saying at the start, you're the Rich Grow Ambassador. Um, and for anyone that doesn't know who Rich Grow are, they are an Australian owned fourth generation business, um, proudly West Australian owned, that has been helping uh, Australian backyards and, and, and front yards, of course, um, uh, grow beautifully for, the, uh, for over a hundred years. And so they're obviously doing a lot that's right. So I'd like to know from your perspective, um, what is it um, that makes, I guess, their gardening products and as a company, stand out from the rest from your perspective well for me I love working with uh, family-owned businesses which is, is what it is um, and you know like I'm a I'm a landscape designer I work on TV I do all of that but at the heart of it I'm a gardener and that's kind of where it all stems from and and when I met with them it, it was evident that they're gardeners too and you know we sat down and we just started talking about what 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 do you grow and how do you grow it and there was a, just a really nice rapport there and I understood that um, what what they do is is the best for the for the garden really um, and you know I just really wanted to be involved in them and they they took me to their their plant in Western Australia and it's absolutely incredible uh, how they create their their compost their potting mixes their their um, recycling so they've got this giant thing called what they call it the stomach I think where they <laughs> collect green waste and food waste and turn it back into compost and they use the methane as to power the plant and it's really incredible the way that they kind of uh, are looking at um, the environment as well as, as producing what they produce. Mm, so it's like your, your, your values aligned, given that the, it's, it's per, per, purpose built as opposed to anything else first. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I guess as an ambassador, that's something that would be very important. I think for anyone that's put in their, their face and their name, you wouldn't be supporting anything that, that wasn't um, purpose built, of course, and, and, and driven. So. Of yeah. So what products are, oh, sorry, go. I've also used their product and it works, which helps. <laughs> <laughs> well, that being said, what products do you recommend um, parents consider buying from their range? Um, yeah. Cause they've got quite a lot available in their range, don't they? They've got a huge range um, and they've got a huge range of sort of specific fertilizers. So, you know, fertilizer for rose or for citrus. So, um, really well designed for those plants but if you're concerned about children putting dirt in their mouth and thing, things like that they've got a really good organic range which i use on all my vegetables mm -hmm. uh, both liquid and um, slow release uh, but also they've got a fantastic couple of 
uh, things. One called beta weed, which is a safe spray that, that you spray on weed. So it's basically uh, salt and vinegar that just, you can literally watch the plants dissolve over, over the day in front of you. So that's really good to use because it's safe around pets and safe around kids. Oh, I need some of that. And, yeah, rather than something that's really toxic. Um, and there's also beta bug as well. So you can spray it on your veggies and things like that to get all those pests and diseases. And it's made of like chili and garlic and, and lots of natural products as well. Um, so they're really good because they're effective and they're, they're safe. That's awesome. Um, well, I'll, I'll be heading straight to Bunnings to do that because my weeds are out of control at the moment down here in Melbourne with a bit of rain and everything else. They just do not stop. <laughs> it's just really... yeah, well, this is the time to get your weeds out for sure. Get ready for spring. It's like butter. It just sort of just falls out of the ground. It's beautiful. <laughs> but in general, what are some of your favourite products to use in the garden just in general then? Uh, well, I like the um, Black Marble Rose food. Um, so I'm, I've started to get into roses. You know, you go through these periods of what plants you like. And as you're sort of training in horticulture, you sort of try and go for all these new and trendy things. But then you come back to some of the old classics like uh, climbing roses and things like that. And I've had great success with the Black Marble uh, granular range and the liquid range on that. And all my, I've used that on all my flowering plants, actually. So that's a, a really good one. Uh, and they are bringing out a tomato food as well. So I'll be looking forward to, to, to trying that. Awesome. So all in all, I guess they've got a really strong lineup of natural, um, sounds like organic sort of fertilizer soil soakers as well. Uh, what are soil soakers? So you can get this issue where um, your soil won't accept water. It's really odd. It gets this bacteria in it and it, you can test it by you pour some water on the top of your soil and it kind of looks a bit like mercury and just doesn't soak in. Uh, that's You've got a problem called hydrophobia where you have Basically, your soil is scared of water. So you need to use a, a soil wetter, which allows the water to penetrate. And it's good to use it even if you don't have this problem, because it just means the water will soak really deep into the soil and get to the, the roots where the plants need it. So you get better, effective, more mm -hmm. effective watering, which is good in times of drought and things like that, too. So this would be something maybe more so in um, warmer parts of Australia, would you say? Or, you would or still, find it, you'd still find it in Melbourne. Uh, down, down South Australia and all that sort of stuff, you do get it all over. Uh, and it's a, it's a good way of making sure that, I mean, water is a, a lazy thing. It'll take the easiest route when it hits the ground. So uh, by using a soil soaker, it just means you get better um, absorption throughout the whole soil profile. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. And they've got their potty mixes um, and then a whole heap of different products to help control pests and diseases. So yeah. any particular ones to help sort of control those narky little critters in the garden? Yeah. That, that beta bug that I was talking about is definitely the way to go. It's all all natural, you know, the garlic, the chili, there's pyrethrum in there. So it just takes out any of those things that you, you don't want. Um, you know, chemicals get a, a bad rap and for, for good reason, but I think it's more about the way people use them. So some chemicals can be used really effectively if they're used properly, but a lot of people don't know how to use them, um, especially around kids and, and animals. And that can cause problems if you're using something that's natural like beta bug you, you don't really have those concerns so uh, it just makes for safer gardening so talking about that um, all are all of their products safe for kids to have exposure to or just certain ranges um that they just the natural be aware. ranges and the organic ones yeah you can you can be um confident in the organic and the, the natural ranges uh all the other ones uh you just want to make sure you read the application and the application on you know on directions on the back of the pack and just yes. do what it says this by adding more you do not get extra growth you do not get extra dead weeds or anything like that you're just using it at the wrong amount and it'll just cost you money so just do what it says on the packet great advice well thanks for this chat today charlie i've really loved um this time with you and i think overall you've really shown us of course how fostering a love of gardening and um just the outdoors in general is that lifelong gift that any parent can sort of give and bestow on, on, their, on their children. Um, and we just hope that many and everyone listening um, will actually go ahead and start doing that. Even if they, they haven't done it before, this is what, what a time. And that's what we said at the very start of the chat, what a time now to actually to use this opportunity. So in general, if parents have got any other questions about their range or whereabouts can they go to actually sort of to purchase their range then? 
so Rich Grow uh, stopped in Bunnings, but they also stopped in um, various independent nurseries around Australia. Uh, so you can head there. The good thing ab about gardeners is they're really happy to give you their information for free. So uh, if you are getting started, now is the perfect time. Just have a go. Don't worry if you get it wrong. I still kill plants to this day. Uh, but I, you know, I have more successes than I have failures, and that's what keeps me going and what I love. So just, just have a go. Yeah. And, and just in closing, we've sort of covered off quite a lot of information. What sort of key messages would you have for any parent watching or listening at the moment, just with regards to getting the kids out and gardening in, in general? Just, um, just enjoy it and enjoy the, the, um, the feedback you get from the kids when, you know, they start enjoying it. Just, just really cherish that because, you know, learning something for the first time, and like I said back at the beginning when I first saw that bulb come up, that's an experience they'll only get once. So just make sure you're engaged in your kids. You know, I live a, a very busy life with, I have a lot of work on and I, a, a bit of travel, but when I'm with my kids, I'm with my kids 100%, and that's the most important thing you can do in the garden. Yes. Thank you for, for your advice and for your time today, Charlie. As, as I said, we've really loved chatting my with you. Take care, give my love to the family and uh, just stay safe. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Right, bye.